everyone, it's Betsy. I wanted to come on and share with you a few ornaments that I've been making this past month. Um, this is one particular type that I'm going to tell you about and I thought I would do a few consecutive videos and share some other ones that I've made as well. I've loved making ornaments for years. I used to be in craft shows and sell them and I really got into the Victorian ornaments years ago and made those. Um, but I discovered this little acrylic, uh, plastic, whatever, um, bauble, I guess you would call it. It's not a ball shape. It's more narrow and it, um, it's about three and a half inches in diameter. And it opens up, it snaps together and closes, and it opens up so you can decoupage inside of it, or you could even um, put something inside of it, but you're not gonna get the depth that you do in a bowl. I got these from Fact Factory Direct Crafts, and I'll put a link below. They're 90 millimeters, if that helps anyone. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do was to make some little English robin ornaments. I fell in love with the English robin in England last year. I was walking through Kew Gardens, which is a magnificent garden, and um, a little robin started singing. And I looked and looked, and I finally saw it in a holly bush. And it just sat there, I mean, for five minutes singing this most beautiful tune and let me get very close to it and I took pictures of it and um, it just left such an impression on me. And I have looked up the meaning of an English robin and it says that it's renewal, beginnings, hope. And I thought that was so apropos, especially for now. And, um, and it, it was especially true for me back then. I, I don't travel much and my husband and I had an opportunity to go to England for three months, which was just phenomenal. Uh, we saw our son get married there and my husband worked there and we had an amazing time. So for me, it was just a wonderful journey and um, I think the little Robin was wishing me well and sharing my joy. Anyway, back to the ornaments. Um, so this is one I did, and all I did was I decoupaged a napkin that had the little robin on it, and then I added some metallic paints and um, sealed it with some gloss, high gloss, added some glitter, and actually this particular one you could put in a window. I have my window here. I don't know if you can see, but it's still a little bit transparent. So it'd be pretty hung up by in a window or um, in a tree, on a door, wherever. So I was particularly pleased with this one. I used this um, little checked ribbon I had on hand. Actually, it was fabric, and I just tore it to make a little thin ribbon out of it. So that's kind of a more country look, I guess you would say. Um, here's another one I did. Now on this one, I kept it more clear and I just decoupaged the bird in the back portion of the um, ornament. You can either do it on the front portion or the back, whichever. Um, I'll show you another one I did where I did it on the outside of the ornament, which I really liked as well. So, so many variations and different things that you can do. Um, to decorate these but again you can see that it's pretty clear on both sides okay here's one more and this is one that I did where I put the bird on the outside rather than the inside of the ornament I shellacked it added some glitter just added a little twine to the top of this one and on the back I put a clock and this was rice paper that I had bought and there were like six or eight clocks on it and this is an actually a clock from Kensington Station which is in London where we were 
So this is really meaningful for me and, and a nice little gift or souvenir to save for um, memory's sake. <laughs> so then I used some other types of rice paper and rice paper is a very thin paper but it's not as thin as napkins and you don't have to use as thin of decoupage. I used um, Ranger's uh, mixed media mat, mixed media, and I love that particular type. So that, that was great to use. For the inside around the edges, I used um, a bronze flake, uh, mica flakes, and then I just put some gloss over top of it all to seal it. And again, on the back, I used a clock. This is just a very simple one. It's not very complicated. There's some YouTubers, if you look these up, bubbles up on YouTube, you'll see some that are really gorgeous and just, they make them beautiful. And But I just wanted to make some quick ones that I didn't have to devote as much time to each and every one of them so that I could use a bunch of them on my tree. Here I used a copper, um, oh, I can't think of the name of this chain, but you know what it is, you've seen it. And just cut it and made it shorter. And that was kind of a little different type of hanger. So you could use any type of hanger on these. I think on my tree, I'll probably be pretty consistent on whichever one I choose. Okay, now another rice paper that I bought from Etsy was this particular little cherub. Oh, my little yum yum in the background. I'm sorry, she's whining. I don't, I think she wants to go upstairs and get in bed. <laughs> she loves to sleep on my bed. So just excuse her if you hear any whining. Um, I love this little cherub. And there were about, yeah, I know there were six on a sheet. That one was more expensive. Now, if you buy the Stamperia rice paper, which, is this type, this was a Stamperia image. They range between $2.50 and $3, $4 on Etsy. Um, so they're more economical. Whereas this angel, uh, I think maybe the lady made the rice paper herself. So that rice paper was $6.99 plus shipping. So not, not real cheap, but still I had to have that. I thought that they were so, so pretty. And what I did on this one, I put her down first, decoupaged her. No, I didn't. No, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. First, I put down, I'm trying to think. No, you know, I think <laughs> I should have written it down, but I think I might have put down the script paper first, and that was pink, and that again was um, rice paper. So I put that down first, decoupage that, let it dry, and then I put the little cherub behind it. Even if I did that in reverse, I think it would pretty much come out the same. Um, but something tells me I put the script down first because this is pretty obvious here across her chest. I think either way would have worked though. And then on the back, all I did on this one was I used some gesso and I used some crackle paint and um, a little bit of pink over top of that to bring out the cracks. And I thought that was kind of cool. And I used a silver string for that one to hang. So again, very easy and pretty quick. On this type, this is the Stamperia pattern and I'll try to hold it up like this so you can see how pretty that looks when the light comes through. So these would look beautiful hung up all over your window panes. Um, sometimes I think the light will be too much and you won't be able to see the design too much, but um, at other times you will. On this one, I made it a little more Victorian and I put this pretty silver and pearl trim around it. Now you can see on the back of this one, um, I didn't put anything else because I wanted it to be more transparent. 
and you can see that you just see the greetings word reversed. Um, but that didn't bother me because I, I just want it to be on the front when I display it. And one more, here's another one from that same collection, a little bird that, and the word Christmas with the roses. And again, I used that same trim. And so you can see that the back is not as pretty as my other ones, but um, when you put it up to the window and the light shines through, you can really see how pretty that looks. So I was tickled with these. Um, I have more to share with you that I've made, different types. I'll share this type with you next. And um, there's another one like that. And I just had so much fun making these and um, we'll be happy to share my results. So stay tuned for some more Christmas ornaments that are quick and easy and fun. Bye, have a great day.